In this video, we are going to be looking at dynamic SQL and schema changes or changes in general around uh, the structure of our database. In general, I'm not going to be talking a lot about dynamic SQL as part of risks, but keep in mind there's always uh, those risk factors as well when we talk about dynamic SQL. So let's look at an example of this. And the example that we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at two examples, is one where we do it wrong, in my opinion, and then we're going to do it right, in my opinion, uh, in this example here. So the first thing I want uh, everyone to notice, in fact, now that I'm seeing this, I think what I can do here so that we can see more of what's happening. There we go. This is better. Okay, as we create a table, we have two columns. Both of them are var cars. We insert some data. This, by the way, would be coming from our application layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this up. But this is coming from like our application or ETL layer. So this is not something we're doing. And this is where, let's say, we have a design. So this part that I'm highlighting here, uh, from the declare SQL to the setting SQL to the executing SQL, uh, this is basically code that we uh, would be maintaining. So this would be like a stored procedure, or this would be some type of code that we have to maintain on a regular basis. At the end, I'm just dropping the table so I can rerun this very fast. So we see what happens when we execute all of this is that we get these uh, two values uh, that are correct, that are both integers, and the other ones are nulls. That is correct. Okay, so let's suppose our schema changes. Now, I have a video in this YouTube channel about changing schemas on tables. If you have to change schemas constantly, you probably shouldn't be using uh, SQL. Uh, that's, there's a bigger problem there, but we'll, we'll skip that for now. If I run this, you'll notice that because of how this is written right here, it does not pick up that third column. So what that means is, again, if we're talking about our architecture, we have to stop and think about this from a coding perspective. We have to go in, we have to update whatever code this is, right? Because the way we've written this is that we manually go in and we manually add this, right? We're manually try casting these, right? And we're manually try casting uh, uh, further details on this. So my point is the way this is written is all manual, right? We have to make manual updates. We have to make a manual update to this. So now we have to go in, we have to change our stored procedure. Keep in mind, if we have a stored procedure that's referencing that and it's manual, we have to rep change that. So we have all these object dependencies that we now have to change, right? That's the way that this is written. And I've seen derivatives of this um, where you have, uh, let's say, uh, you know, let's say a, a temp table that's created and then they select from the temp table and it's all manual because then we would have to change that temp table and the select statement from the temp table and so on and so forth and so on and so forth. And then we have another procedure that's calling that dynamic created object and then another one and then another one and then another one. Okay, so I've seen all this. And it, it makes sense. Now, let's look at this one. This is very different. Okay, so again, we have the same, and we can't see it. Oh, I, I realize I, I ran this one wrong at first. Okay, so let's look at the output. It's the same output, but just to show in this one, there is more to it. Okay, so we have our table here. We have, again, our application or ETL uh, insert statement. But we'll notice that in this case, the SQL, and it does look a little bit more intense at first, but it actually isn't. It's dynamic still but notice that our dynamic nature is using the information schema dot columns and this is available even outside of sql server guys in other sql databases and you'll notice we're taking this from this table well what does this mean well we see what happens is we're trying to cast uh, this column um, as uh, an integer and this is not keep in mind done dynamically at all in other words um, what I mean is in, in the, the try cast as int, uh, this is not done dynamically. So um, what that means is that this would be a manual update if we were hard coding it this way. If we were not hard coding it, if we wanted to make it dynamic, we could keep in mind inner join to another format table and we could make this value, let's say the integer, uh, we would join on the column name, right? And we would, um, so we would do an inner join on the column name and we would take this value right here, this integer value, which is what we're doing manually here, but we would take it and we would make that from the format table, right? Uh, or for the final for table, whatever you want to call it. So again, th th this is if we were making this more complicated or if we were adding a layer of complexity, we would have some final table that it should be. And so we would dynamically get that to where, again, if we make a change to this table, um, then we would only have to, to change this table and then the format table, right? But in this case, we want all of our values to be integers. So you'll see what happens is if I add another column here, it will automatically add that from this information schema dot columns. In other words, this is ready to handle and we see it actually outputs those three values. And yes, the insert statement, um, that's because this would be coming from the application or ETL layer, but we'll see it automatically grabs that, right? So I realize that 
when it comes to the data types, those are where we're going to have to use some type of other table, and we'd have to do a join on this to whatever that final table is, and we're going to join on the column names for those of you who don't. Like, well, how would we do that? Well, we were going to join on the column names, and we're going to pick the, so this would be T1 right here as a case in point, like uh, table 1, and then on the join on the table 2, we would pick the data type on the table 2. And uh, likewise, we would have to wrap this in another case when where let's say the data type is var car, we would have to wrap that. But the idea is that if we made changes to this table structure, then it would pick up on those changes automatically. Whereas if we made changes in this case, we're gonna have to go in and we're gonna have to edit all these values. Now, the great thing about this simple example is in both of these cases, it's not that complicated, right? In the sense that it really wouldn't be that hard. But when you have tables with 100 columns, or in one case I've seen over 500 columns, and you add, let's say, uh, 30 columns, and you subtract, let's say, 70 columns, Who, man, that's, that's a lot of work. And this right here, the way that this is built, it reduces the amount of work that's done versus this right here would be a monumental amount of work uh, to do that. So this is one of those videos where, of course, it's definitely longer than six minutes, and the reason why it's longer than six minutes is because it's looking at how we architect things. I'm not a big fan in general of using dynamic SQL, and I'm not a big fan of using SQL if we have to constantly change schema. If we're... Like, for instance, let's say we have 700 columns and we're dropping 30 of them and we're adding, I'm sorry, we're adding 30 and we're dropping 80. I think we need to reevaluate whether SQL is the, the best tool for that because let's just think about it. What are we going to do with all the past records? Like, for instance, let's say we add 30 columns. Okay, cool. So all the past records that don't have data for those columns we just added, what are we going to do? Are we going to null those columns? Because if we null those columns, then what's different than if we use NoSQL and we just suddenly had documents with new columns, Right. That's where, if I see people changing schemas all the time, I'm, I think people need to reevaluate SQL. But uh, that's not super popular, and, and sometimes you just have people that use SQL because they don't know anything else. But, uh, but you have a, already a conundrum if you're constantly adding and, and subtracting columns because it's like, well, what about the past data? It's one thing to drop columns. That's fine. But adding columns, uh, there's complexity. So there's a video. If I can remember, I will link the video in the description to the other video about thinking about changing schemas. Um, but if you're going to, if you're going to be in an environment where you definitely use SQL and you're changing schemas all the time, instead of hard coding your dynamic SQL like this, which is, is going to be really painful, you're going to want to use information schema dot columns in, in these type of situations. Um, because as you get more complex than that, it's going to be much easier to handle it this way. It's going to allow for more change than the other.